Welcome to another episode of TikTok told me about a thing and now it's my job to educate you on it. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And yes, this video is about a building that TikTok has inadvertently made me hate. This video is going to be about 432 Park Avenue, but before I get started, let me first give credit where credit is due because there is no way I would have even ever heard about this building, let alone come to hate it, if it weren't for the TikTok account 432 Park Avenue hate page. As the name implies, the account is entirely dedicated to her sharing her hate opinions and some positive opinions about uh, 432 Park Avenue, as well as a variety of other buildings around the world. So I will be linking her TikTok down below, as well as a few articles that I'm also getting more information from. But where to start with talking about 432 Park Avenue? Oh, for this video, I should probably start with thanking the sponsors for this video, Cerebral. Cerebral is a mental health membership that provides access to ongoing online care and medication management for anxiety, depression, and insomnia for one flat monthly rate. Everything is online, which makes it incredibly convenient to schedule appointments and talk to your providers, and it's all incredibly private. Their comprehensive care plan is designed for long-term treatment, and even without insurance, it's incredibly affordable. I struggle with anxiety, and I know how terrifying taking those first few steps into bettering your mental health can be, but Cerebral makes it easy with their questionnaire and also their simple plan options. Cerebral offers three plans, medication and care counseling, medication and therapy, and therapy. If you'd like to take the next step in your mental health, go ahead and click the link in my description box. It'll get you started on the questionnaire and get you paired with a provider right away. And your first month starts at $30. All right, let's talk about some rich people living in a worse apartment than I do. Before I show you how ugly this building is, let me tell you a little bit about 432 Park Avenue. The nearly 1400 foot tower at 432 Park Avenue, briefly the tallest residential building in the world. And that's very briefly, by the way, like three years briefly, like not even worth mentioning. That's like Handbook for Mortals scamming their way to the New York Times bestsellers list and being there for a whopping 14 hours and then bragging about it even though they scammed their way there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a different video topic. Unless you have like an older building that's been around for a few decades, like don't even brag about that. The nearly 1400 foot tower at 432 Park Avenue, briefly the tallest residential building in the world, was the pinnacle of New York's luxury condo boom half a decade ago, fueled largely by foreign buyers seeking discretion and big returns. Obviously the building was in construction for a few years with the topping out, <laughs> with the topping out ceremony happening in October of 2014. I'm sorry, I'm 12 years old. Which signified that the building had met its maximum height and it was reported that the construction had concluded in the end of December of 2015. So remember that quote I mentioned talking about discretion? Yeah, well, uh, the thing about 432 Park Avenue is it's actually on Billionaire Row, which tells you a little bit about the types of clientele it has. So 432 Park Avenue is made up of 85 floors, but that's 85 floors with like a caveat, but we'll talk about that in a second. And it has 104 units. According to Wikipedia, in 2016, 81 of the 104 units were sold at a median price of 18.4 million. Million. Do you know how much fucking anything else you could buy with that. By the following year, the remaining unsold units were put for sale at prices between 6.5 and 82 million. Not 8.2, 82 million. To live in this dumb building. <laughs> so here's where you're gonna start hearing my caveat mentioned a second ago. Two penthouses on floor 91 were sold for 60 million in 2018 to Carol Schechter, the wife of hedge fund manager, Israel Englander. While three penthouse units on floors 92 and 93 were sold in 2017 for a combined 91 million. There are other price breakdowns for some of the other high floors, but the highest unit on floor 96 was listed at 95 million million, but actually sold to Saudi businessman Fawaz Alokair, sorry if I butchered that, for 88 million in 2016. The sale of all the units was expected to bring 3.1 billion in profit, the highest of any building in New York City. February of 2021, almost all of the units are occupied at 432 Park Avenue. The thing about 432 Park Avenue is that because of obviously the price and because of the type of clientele that it caters to, we don't know exactly who is living in this type of building. Usually high profile names like this, like certain celebrities and things like that, you can kind of figure out where they live in New York and things like that because of how high profile they are, okay? But because these people don't just have money, they have fuck you money and hide the body money, they are able to buy their apartments at 432 Park Avenue under shell corporations. So we don't really know the exact extent of who 
has or has lived at 432 Park Avenue. However, there is one name or two names of note that I can include here. In 2018, JLo and A-Rod bought a three bedroom condominium there for 17.5 million and they listed it for sale shortly after. They didn't make it a year. That should tell you a little bit about this building. So now that you know a little bit more about some of the inhabitants or possible inhabitants of 432 Park Avenue, let me show you this ugly building. Let me get out of the way. This is hideous. People live in this. I don't care about architecture. I really don't. I'm, I'm just like, that looks cooler, that doesn't. But this is so ugly, it makes me angry. And I don't understand why. I kind of feel more related to 432 Park Avenue hate page because she, her hatred goes so deep, okay? That she went into Minecraft and made a Minecraft model to scale of this freaking building. That is dedication. I was like, why would you do that? But the more I've looked into this building, I understand, okay? I understand the mindset that she must have been in to be like, I need to look at this model in a different medium because I hate it so fucking much. I get it. So as I'm sure you can tell, 432 Park Avenue looks like a cyst on the forehead that is the New York City skyline that just won't go the fuck away no matter what you do. It's ugly. Maybe you can put some fake freckles around that cyst, but it's still there. Here's another view from closer to the top. I don't know if this comparison is going to land with you, but I imagine that the architect for this building, it gives me the vibe that like, he was the kid on the playground that like, my dad is bigger than your dad. He could totally beat up your dad. And then he like applied that to this building. So let's talk about the height thing because that's how they were able to cheat the goddamn system with this thing. So this building is one boring as hell. They were clearly like, oh yes, that's what people want in a building tall. So those floors where they look like you can see directly through the building, those aren't uh, under construction. The building is finished. Well, it depends on your definition of finished, but the building is finished. Those are design features. Those are there intentionally. You see those floors where there's nothing there are twofold. They're partially to help add on height to the building. That's how they were able to get the nearly 1400 feet height for the building. And they are also there to make sure that this ugly, dumb, boring looking building doesn't snap in half in the wind. See, there are lots of tall buildings, but you look at the architecture that goes into those buildings and you can see how they are built to withstand wind or even hell sway in the wind. And they are designed to do that, okay? I don't know why you would wanna live somewhere where things swaying are like a feature and amenity of what you're paying for. But apparently that's a thing. Although to be fair, I do live in Southern California and with all the earthquakes we get, <laughs> it doesn't matter the height of the building, you may experience a little bit of swaying. So the way that this building does not snap in half is that it has these two, you can count them as more in my opinion, but two floors that are just open concept essentially. And those are considered mechanical floors. I don't know if this is a New York restriction or a New York City restriction. I don't know. I'm not an architect and I'm not based in New York. It's my understanding that these floors do not count as floors, which is how they were one, able to get them higher because I think there's like a floor requirement or something. Like you could only have a set number of floors or a set number of actual livable residential space, which is how they were able to get to this height by having these two floors that were mechanical floors because they don't count. Okay, but these mechanical floors are open so that the wind can pass through them. So like I said, they were trying to get 432 Park Avenue to this insane height to get this tallest residential building uh, title, okay, fleetingly, but they had it. They decided to cheat the restrictions by making these mechanical floors bigger than they probably should be. This building is so goddamn tall, they had to consult with the Federal Aviation Administration to make sure it wouldn't be a danger to planes passing by. Why does it need to be that tall? So before I move on to some of the resident complaints and other problems from 432 Park Avenue, laid out in this New York Times article. Really quickly, I wanna talk about the architect, Rafael Vignoli's other project. This isn't his first building with some complaints. So Rafael Vignoli uh, designed the walkie talkie tower in the UK. The thing about this building that you may notice is that the front of the building is concaved. The fun thing about that concave is that for two hours a day, when the sun hits it, it basically becomes a giant goddamn mirror. A reporter was able to 
fry a goddamn egg on the sidewalk because of the heat generated from the sun bouncing off of this giant mirror on the walkie talkie. Also with the concave, it made the wind levels on the surface street that much goddamn worse. I'm gonna talk about some of the issues that the building and the tenants are complaining about. Um, before any of you start commenting in my comment section, getting defensive about a building meant for billionaires. I will also point out that this article that I'm going to be pulling most of these quotes from also mentions that other similar buildings that are of the same height and or taller now are quietly having these same issues, but these are the ones that are, we're being made aware of, probably because 432 Park Avenue is annoying in its existence. So I don't wanna hear you guys in the comment sections like, well, other buildings aren't so better. This building and this building are having that too. I don't care. We're talking about the ugly toothpick, okay? That's what I wanna complain about right now. Kind of funny that we know anything about these complaints whatsoever within 432 Park Avenue, because if there's one thing that rich people want to do at all given times, it's protect their investment. 432 Park Avenue has a variety of issues that normally people would just complain about and get them fixed. However, because of the exclusivity of 432 Park Avenue, there is the risk of them revealing these problems and then tanking the resale value if they do decide to sell off their units. They don't wanna tank the property value of their units. This article was published in February of this year, but I know in 2020, property values in New York were already going down significantly. Um, if you look at any New York YouTubers and things like that, you'll see them talking about how they got a lot of discounts on rents and things like that. So property values are already tanking in New York. I'm assuming that uh, this building is not gonna be any different. So one of the complaints that they talk about in this article is from Serena Abramovich talking about her experience with her and her husband. Uh, they apparently bought an apartment in 432 Park Avenue to have a home near their adult children as they are retired. But she was under the impression that she had bought a completed unit in a completed building and was surprised when she came in 2016 and she was put in a freight elevator surrounded by steel plates and plywood with a hard hat operator. That's how I went up to my hoity-toity apartment before closing. Hoity-toity. Every time I hear the word hoity-toity, I tell myself I need to use it more and I just never do, but it's such a good word, hoity-toity. Here's me plugging my hoity-toity merch because I keep forgetting to do that. Teespring, down below, linked. Small Entertainment, thank you, goodbye. She also goes on to talk about the number of floods that have happened in the building that have led to the elevators being disconnected, like not working for a while. According to this article, there were two leaks in November of 2018. The first one was acknowledged in an email to residents. Like it's like, oh yeah, no, we're gonna try and keep this quiet, but like, don't worry, we handled it. And then only four days later, a water line failure on the 74th floor caused water to enter elevator shafts removing two of the four residential elevators from service for weeks. <laughs> the thing about these leaks though is that they are most likely a direct uh, result of the engineering and design of this building because both of the leaks happened on the mechanical floors that were criticized for being too tall. If one of the leaks was there, it'd be one thing, but both of the leaks happening on the mechanical floors, come on. So on the first incident, okay, Miss Abernitch is, I'm sorry if I'm, but I'm butchering that name, several floors, okay, below that leak, 500, thousand dollars in damage from the water leaking into her apartment unit. 500,000, that's, that's a house. You could buy a house with that damage money. God, which people are wild. Which, <laughs> rich people are wild. <laughs> Apparently also the water damage people have actually used it to get out of deals. The anonymous buyer of unit 84B cited a catastrophic water flood that caused major damage to 83rd and to 86th floors, multiple floors experiencing extreme water damage. In 2016, as grounds to back out of the deal, the would-be buyer who was contract for a $46.25 million apartment, fuck, was a member of the Beckman family, the owners of the Jose Cuervo tequila brand. I'm sorry, I don't drink. I'm, I'm <laughs> Someone's gonna be mad at me for mispronouncing alcohol. I don't drink. All buildings sway in the wind, but at exceptional heights, those forces are stronger. A management e email explained that a high wind condition stopped an elevator and caused a resident to be entrapped on the evening of October 31st, 2019 for an hour and 25 minutes. Okay, is it just me? Or does the phrase entrapped sound worse than stuck. Entrapped is like, oh, you're you're not coming out of there. Like if someone was like, okay, so it appears that you 
are entrapped in the elevator, I'm having a panic attack, okay? If I was just stuck in an elevator, maybe I'd be fine. I can maybe like talk my way through it, okay? But if someone said the word entrapped, I would lose my goddamn mind. Wind sway can cause the cables in the elevator shaft to slap around and lead to slowdowns and shutdowns, according to an engineer who has not to be named because he has worked on other towers in New York with similar issues. Oh my God, New York, what is going on? What is going on with your elevator cables? Work on this. <laughs> I'm in Southern California, so like the Santa Ana winds, like I hear them smacking against the window sometimes and I'm convinced I'm gonna die, okay? <laughs> I can't imagine if I was in an elevator and I just heard the cable going like boink. <laughs> I know I have audience in New York. I know you guys are all just me commented like, we're just built different. <laughs> it's like so, that's like crazy. That's ridiculous. Also tall buildings like this are like known to be incredibly loud. Like not like you can hear the city down below. No, it's like the wind, the wind alone. Like it sounds like it's like blowing through your door and like against the window and against the walls, the metal beams like make sound and shit because of the wind. Why would you want to move into a building that you know is brand new and just perpetually be in the mindset of the dad in the white family in the horror movie. That's just like, it's just the house settling. Like you were move, you were buying in to live like that. Why? Okay, residents at 432 Park Avenue complained of creaking, banging and clicking noises in their apartments and a trash chute that Sounds like a bomb when you put trash down it. I don't even know how you would begin to start trying to fix that problem. It sounds like a bomb going off when I throw trash down the trash chute. Fix this. How? How do you fix that besides move to another building? Cut the building in half. Apparently the building has become such a mess and a half to live in that the expenses of just living in the building, so not even just buying the apartment, living in the building itself to be a part of park 432 Park Avenue living. Edward Slinen, a resident who was elected to the condo board late last year, wrote a letter to neighbors in 2020 reporting that the building's insurance costs had increased 300% in two years. The insurance hike was partly because of sprinkler discharge and two water-related incidents. In 2018, that cost the building about 9.7 million in covered losses. The building also has a private restaurant uh, with a Michelin star chef, Sean Forgot. When the building originally opened in late 2015, um, the homeowners were required to spend 1200 a year on the service. Uh, in 2021, that requirement jumps to 15 grand. 15 grand a year on one restaurant. And apparently, People are pissed because breakfast is no longer free. It is weirdly comforting to know that the one unifier amongst everyone is a desire for free breakfast. I don't know why that gives me hope, but it does. So according to the Slinen, uh, the president of Corporate Transportation Group, said he was working with about 40 concerned unit owners out of the 103 units, not including staff apartments, to rein in costs and address possibly dangerous conditions in the building. The group commissioned SBI consultants, an engineering firm, to study mechanical and structural issues. Initial showed that 73% of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing components observed failed to conform with the developer's drawings and that almost a quarter presented actual life safety issues. So that was SBI's findings. Slinen reported that, but then in a phone call when asked for comment, he downplayed their findings and said these were minor things. Even when talking about potentially threatening to one's safety elements of the construction of a building, and the people whose best interests you're supposed to be helping. You downplay that for what I assume is again, wanting to maintain the property value. That's my assumption. This doesn't explicitly say that, but I will. The 40 of 103 units is not surprising to me because again, we don't fully know who lives in these units and we also don't know how often they live in these units. Because again, these people are so goddamn wealthy that some of them probably only have it for like once in a while or secondary homes for their kids or things like that, that they are never actually in this unit on a regular basis. So they don't experience these issues in a way that would be detrimental or even in a way that they would take notice of possibly. So the article ends once again, talking with uh, Serena Abramovich, talking about how everybody here hates each other, which is kind of funny. But again, they're trying to keep things out of the public eye because again, they want discretion. They don't want to know billionaires and billionaires are fighting most likely. But she apparently because of COVID-19 travel restrictions has been living in 432 Park Avenue full time. However, she says that she doesn't care about the property value going down, which would make sense why she's more willing to talk about things because she didn't buy it with the uh, plan to flip it or sell it uh, for more. Um, however, she is in debt to the building. 
because she's refusing to cover the recent increase in common charges. She faces $82,000 in late fees and interest. She's aware that the plight of billionaires won't garner much sympathy, but she says she is speaking out on principle. Okay, I can respect the principle element of it all. I don't care about the plight of billionaires. I, I truly don't. It's kind of funny. I do feel bad on the principle of my own that I believe that everyone should have proper living conditions um, and uh, if there is a genuine life-threatening safety of living in this building, like the there really are not correct things up to code and things like that, um, I think that that's a huge problem, especially for a building of this size. So I know what you're thinking, Amanda, why are you telling us about this building other than you complaining about how ugly it is and you getting to shit on billionaires for like probably too long in this video? Well, the purpose of this video is entirely self-serving because 432 Park Avenue hate page made me aware of a very specific video that I want to watch and I need you to help me find it. According to 432 Park Avenue hate page, there is a short film that was created entirely with the purpose to sell apartments in 432 Park Avenue that allegedly cost $1 million to produce. There's no evidence that I can see of this video being readily available online because it was only shown in the sales office in 432 Park Avenue. However, we do know it exists because there are set photos out and about, behind the scenes photos of this short film. I'm just going to include this clip from 432 Park Avenue's page because she breaks it down beautifully. Here's the plot according to the New York Times. A beautiful woman leaves her country estate in England and takes a private plane to her new apartment at 432 Park Avenue. Along the way, she passes incredibly relevant celebrity cameo Philippe Petit. And if you don't remember who that is, it's the tightrope guy. You know, the one who walked between the Twin Towers? Here are some other things the film includes, for some reason. King Kong, inexplicable ballerinas, Spider-Man, silent film star Anna Mae Wong, Al Capone, and the Wright Brothers. Now, I don't have the money to buy property in 432 Park Avenue, nor would I want to. However, I do kind of want to explore 432 Park Avenue, but that's just because I'm nosy more than anything. But what I do have is $250 for anyone who can find me a copy of this short film. I will Venmo you or cash up you. I don't know what you want. $250, okay? I know it's not a lot, but I'm that's the sacrifice that I am willing to make for this short film because I, I want to see it so badly. So that's where I'm going to end this. <laughs> is this video the first time you're hearing about 432 Park Avenue? Do you also now hate this dumb popsicle stick building like I do? Are you going to go follow 432 Park Avenue hate page like me? She does great videos. She talks about other buildings as well that are all great. She's very fun. Let me know. Comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for just running on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. I'm going to plug my merch one last time. It's linked below. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I know I didn't go into the interior of this building whatsoever, but like, look how soulless and lifeless these apartment buildings is. It may just be the giant windows, because in theory, I love the concept of giant windows, but there's something about the blockiness of the windows with like the barren open concept of some of these apartments that just gives me the heebie-jeebies in a way that I can't fully explain. Thank you, Elaine, Ali, Alan, Elise, Alex, Brayden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colt, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, S and M, Fackles, Hopeless, Hollow, Jack, Ray, Jakers, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Mong, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Mimo, The Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Prilock, Rob, Robbie, Robert, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stephen, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Tyrone, Wendy, Williams, and.